What a performance today by UCLA. They have absolutely earned this victory. They were easily the better team today. 24-6, really dominating the Westlake Hornets on both sides of the ball, especially defensively. And that is how this game will come to a close. The UCLA Bruins have upset your number two ranked Westlake Hornets 34-20. For the second straight year, Westlake loses to UCLA. This Welcome back, everybody, to the Westlake Hornets Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. As today, the Hornets have their biggest game of the season thus far, headed out to Southern California to take on the UCLA Bruins. Westlake is currently ranked number one. UCLA was just ranked number one a couple of weeks ago, but the Bruins are currently on a two-game losing streak after losing to Central Michigan and BYU and have fallen down to number 17 in the rankings. This game is personal for Westlake. They've only lost two games in the past two regular seasons, both of which were to UCLA. The Hornets are certainly out here for revenge. Last year's loss against UCLA cost the Hornets a berth in the national championship game, as obviously the Hornets won out and still did not make that championship. So, Westlake has to be angry. This is certainly becoming a fun rivalry. And the Hornets know they have a lot to play for. Westlake has not played their best football as of late. They have been winning games, but winning a lot of ugly games. The offense has been pretty inconsistent. Two interceptions last week thrown by quarterback Keith Fleming. And Westlake has one of the worst turnover differentials in college football, which is very odd considering they're 6-0. Welcome everybody to UCLA Stadium here in Los Angeles, California as the number one 6-0 Westlake Hornets take on the number 17 5-2 UCLA Bruins. Westlake will choose Tails because Tails never fails except for this time. So Westlake's offense will start on the field as UCLA chooses to defer. Usually Westlake starts on defense but not today so here is the offense. First play from scrimmage. It's a play action fake for Miller. Keith Fleming going to try to scramble with it. And he's going to get a nice run. Probably should have slid instead of taking a hit. But still a good gain of 15. Fleming started the year off really well during the quarterback battle against Marsusio Walteron. And ever since Fleming has permanently won the starting job, he hasn't played as well. Marsusio Walteron has left the program. So no, Wesley cannot bench Fleming for Walteron if they wanted to do that. Nice play there for Dale McBride, who has been Westlake's best receiver throughout the first half of the season. Second and six now. Fleming going to roll out to the right. He has a wide open cash as Troy, who stumbles and dives into the end zone for a Westlake touchdown. A good start for the offense, and it is seven to nothing. Cash as Troy has been rather quiet this season, so it's good to see him making an early play here to put Westlake on the board. Certainly the start Westlake needed. They had to get momentum early. UCLA is a run-first team, led by star running back Anthony Tanner. As you can see, he gets the first down here. The Bruins also have a set of twins on the offense. Quarterback John Hefner and wide receiver Pete Hefner, both of whom are redshirt juniors. This is John Hefner finding his twin brother Pete for a nice gain of 18. We've seen how the Westwood connection worked out for Westlake back when Stephen Westwood was the quarterback. Now UCLA kind of has that here. John Hefner breaks away from Gardner, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Nick Gardner read the play perfectly, but he was unable to bring him down for some reason. That is a UCLA touchdown for John Hefner, and the Bruins will tie it up. So a good start here for the offenses. And we've seen a lot of defensive games thus far for Westlake. The Hornets have played great team defense. Not a ton of sacks, not a ton of turnovers. But right as I say turnover, the offense turns it over. Fleming is intercepted by the linebacker, Golden. If you've been keeping count, that six straight games, Keith Fleming has thrown an interception. He did not throw a pick week one against Florida and has been intercepted in every game since then. If there's one problem with Keith Fleming this year, it's been ball security. He has to keep better care of the football. Nice play by Tanner on the catch. Hefner now with another nice run. I don't know how so many Hornets missed tackles there. And eventually Jock Ballone brings him down at around the 9-yard line. Third and goal now. The Bruins having trouble punching it in here on the goal line. John Hefner going to look to throw it. Short pass is caught by Hoffman. 
who is leveled to the ground by the safety, Kevin Blanchard. So the UCLA Bruins will be forced to kick a field goal. Westlake Special Teams is prepared for the fake. They will not fake it. The kick is good, and UCLA is now on top. They now lead this game 10-7. So let's see if the offense here can rebound. Keith Fleming threw another interception on the last drive, and it certainly seems like Keith Fleming never loses confidence. He still tries to make plays into coverage, even if it's ill-advised. Third and seven, the Hornets just decide to run it. Matt Miller only gets three, so that will force a punt. And Westlake's offense is kind of on a cold streak after starting the game with a touchdown. As John Hefner breaks away from Ingram, he still loses three. Dylan Washington with the play. And the defenses are starting to heat up. It was a slow start for the defenses, but now they are really picking up the pace. UCLA is forced to turn over in a three and out. Westlake stopped them on the red zone, and it looks like the Hornets might get another stop here on this possession. Second and 13, Tanner loses four on the screen, wrapped up by Ronald Benson, who continues his excellent season as arguably the best player on this Westlake team, regardless of position this year. Third and 17, Hefner going to take it deep, and it's intercepted by Bob Adams. An arm punt by John Hefner, however... It looks going to be more than an arm punt. Westlake starting with excellent field position after a nice return by Adams. Bob Adams has been the unsung hero of this defense. He has not had to make a lot of plays this year because he's been very good in coverage. We've seen a lot of Westlake defensive backs struggle in recent years of a cornerback position, but Bob Adams has really adjusted well to the outside, and he's only a sophomore, so he still has plenty of room to grow. Westlake has it back after the turnover. What a risky pass by Fleming. But he threads the needle, connecting with Carter Westwood for a gain of 18 yards. And as I mentioned earlier, Keith Fleming's confidence is one of the biggest pieces of his game, whether the confidence proves to be good or in some cases bad. Final play of the first quarter. Play action fake for Miller. Fleming going to try to run with it to the left side. Keith Fleming with a good gain. That'll be a first down. And that will conclude the first quarter. UCLA leads it 10-7. However, Westlake is knocking on the door of the end zone in what has been a very exciting game thus far. And we still have three quarters to go. It is first down here. First play of the quarter. And Isaiah Sparks loses four. No blocking on that play. That's Luke Hamilton who brings him down. Westlake's offensive line has been really shaky this year. Last year it was amazing. This year it's been far from. But... It won't stop the Hornets from scoring as Carter Westwood finds the end zone for his fourth receiving touchdown of the year, and the Hornets are back on top. Two passing scores so far in the first half from Fleming, who I believe now has four straight games with at least four all-purpose touchdowns, but he's also turned it over at least once every game. Westlake's defense continuing to pick up the pace. Tanner loses a few. Ronald Benson brings him down once again. Benson with another very good start to today's game. Third and eight now for UCLA. Let's see if they can try to convert this first down or if they are stopped again. Hefner's pass is caught by Hoffman, and he does not get it. Bob Adams with the initial contact, and Kevin Blanchard finished him off. So in UCLA's past three possessions, they've only scored three points. Now Westlake really has an opportunity to extend this lead even more and try to really... Make this game ugly. Another loss of four for Isaiah Sparks. Again, the run blocking there was non-existent. Hamilton brings him down again. And Westlake's pass blocking and run blocking has been a lot worse this year than it was a year ago. Third and eight. Fleming going to try to run for the first down. Does he get it? Yes, he does. Tough running there by Keith Fleming to keep the drive alive. Few good runs so far today for Fleming. His legs have been very productive thus far. Under four minutes to go now, Fleming connects on the out route for Carter Westwood, who gains 22 yards. It's been a pretty good game so far for Carter Westwood, who statistically has obviously taken a step back in comparison to last year without his brother at quarterback. Dale McBride entering the backfield here on second down. It's a toss for McBride, and McBride with a very nice play after the catch. They are ruling that a pass as we have an injury. Keith Fleming helped by Coach Conway and a couple trainers to get off the field. Looked like it was his knee. MCL sprain will be questionable to return. So that means great Coles, the juniors now in at quarterback. And yeah, he is certainly a downgrade to Keith Fleming. 
Greg Coles is the only quarterback on this roster other than Fleming who is not being redshirted at the moment. So if something were to happen to Coles, the emergency quarterback would be Bob Adams. There's Zebediah Phoenix with the field goal, but as I was alluding to, Bob Adams would have to come in and play quarterback. He was a very good QB in high school, or Westlake could take the red shirt off of one of their true freshmen, but I doubt they really want to do that. Look at Lee breaking the tackle, wrapped up by Adams, but not before gaining 27 yards. Let's see if UCLA can tie this one up as they're down by seven with about a minute and a half to go in the first half. Third and one, both teams have all timeouts. Tanner with the toss, and he gets pummeled in the backfield. Guess who it is? Ronald Benson again, who brings him down for the hit. Fourth and three, UCLA has decided to go for it, but they're also chewing the clock. So it doesn't look like they have a lot of confidence in their offense to convert. However, they do get the first down. That's Jelani Carter with a gain of around six. However, UCLA took a lot of time off there, which is a little bit odd, but they still have one timeout left. Down at 36 seconds, second and seven. John Hefner on the run. Gets by Adams and is brought down at around the 13-yard line for a gain of 13. And UCLA is continuing to drive down the field. Now down to 28 seconds now. It's going to be a play-action fake. Hefner going to try to score another rushing touchdown, and he does. Hefner was untouched until he got tackled by Graves in the end zone. And the Bruins will tie this one up at 17 apiece with just under 20 seconds to go in the half. So who's in it quarterback for Westlake? The answer is still Greg Coles. Keith Fleming has not yet returned to the game. Coles with a nice pass here for Carter Westwood, who has a few blocks and runs out of bounds past the 45. Westlake still has a timeout and nine seconds left. So I think if they get another first down or two, they're definitely in field goal range. And we know Zebediah Phoenix is one of the best legs in college football. Time continuing to tick as it's Mo Rogers with the play. He runs out of bounds with two seconds to go. Westlake has an opportunity to take the lead before halftime. A very nice drive there from Greg Coles. As here is Zebediah Phoenix the second. Another pretty easy field goal. The kick is good. And Westlake with a buzzer beater here to end the first half. They now lead this game 20-17. to The Bruins do start the second half on offense. So this is still anybody's game. And either team has a very good shot of winning this game. We will continue to monitor the Keith Fleming injury situation, see if he returns in the second half. Anthony Tanner opened things up with a loss of three. Ronald Benson with what, like his fourth tackle for loss today? I mean, he continues to just be incredible. Third and 13 now for the Bruins. Let's see if they can convert or if Westlake's defense can get an early stop here in the third quarter. Tight end in motion. Hefner going to look to throw it, and his pass is deflected. Justin Graves at a pick six right in his hands. I can't tell if he's happy or that he got the stop or upset that he dropped the pick six. So Westlake's offense now has it back. Keith Fleming is in the game at quarterback. He's going to play through the injury, show off that toughness as the first play from scrimmage in this third quarter for Westlake is a 21-yard run for Irving Porter. Porter did not touch the ball in the first half, which is a little bit of a surprise. Irving Porter started the season off slow, and he has come along in recent weeks. It was good last week against Utah. And Keith Fleming with a costly turnover. The option pitch continues to be Westlake's kryptonite. That's Miller with the touchdown. And the UCLA Bruins are on top. The freshman, Travis Miller, with the scoop and score that will be ruled as a fumble. Two turnovers now for Keith Fleming, a costly play for Westlake, and they are now losing in this game just like that. Third and three, the Hornets trying to convert as Fleming is chased down from behind, does not get anything. That's Joe Thompson who brings him down. Westlake went after Thompson a few years ago in recruiting. I believe he's now a redshirt junior. Time really does fly when you're having fun. <laughs> as John Hefner loses four on the option, Will Herring brings him down. Neither team is running the option well so far in the second half. Third and five now. Hefner under pressure. He breaks the tackle from Big Tuna. Gets the first, but he fumbles the football. Bob Adams is the one who recovers. And Westlake's defense forces a huge turnover. That looks like a really nice run for John Hefner. Escaping the pressure, getting the first down. 
but he coughed up the football. That was Justin Graves, the freshman who forced it, and I think it's pretty clear that ball came clean out before Hefner's knee hit the ground, so the fumble will still count, and Westlake will get possession, but they might not keep it for long. He's on third and two. Irving Porter only gets one. A huge tackle there for UCLA. So now it's fourth and one at around midfield, and Westlake will unsurprisingly decide to go for it. John Cummins is for running back in the backfield. He gets the handoff, and he gets around seven yards. That's all he needed to keep the chains moving. A gutsy call there from head coach Mason Conway, but it does pay off. Second and three now, a little bit over a minute to go in the third. 20 to 17 is your score as Fleming is crushed, and he is injured again. Keith Fleming has taken a beating today, and he has to be helped off the field once more. He would re-aggravate his MCL sprain, but as you can tell, he is right back into the game, so I don't think he hurt his knee too badly. Third and seven, a nice first down conversion there for the sophomore Maurice Rogers. That'll do it for the third quarter. UCLA leading 20 to 24. However, Westlake does have it in the red zone, and they have a prime opportunity here to take the lead. Third and one from the two. Can the Hornets punch it in? The answer is yes. Irvin Porter is the one with the score, and the Hornets are quickly back on top. Porter's second rushing score of the year, and it is now 27-24, to 24, but that's plenty of time for UCLA. Six and a half minutes to try to regain this lead back. Let's see if they'll be able to do it. Second and three. Hefner and Tanner in the backfield. It's a screen for Quinn. Gets by a couple defenders. Jukes past Blanchard and is hit out of bounds by Valone. But not before gaining 22 yards. A big play on the screen from Tyler Quinn. Following play now. Six to go in the fourth. Hefner going to look to throw it. Under some pressure and he is hit hard to the ground. Will Herring brings him down for a loss of six. Pretty good performance thus far in the second half for Herring. And now it is third and long for UCLA. This would be such a huge stop here for Westlake. It's a screen for Anthony Tanner, and he does not get much. That was Jock Ballone and Nick Gardner there with the tackle. It looked like Ronald Benson as well was in the area. So now it's fourth and 15. UCLA is already going to go for it. This looks pretty desperate, but the call works. Bob Adams gets burnt by Tyler Quinn, bringing it inside the five. I've been praising Bob Adams all day, or at least I praised him earlier, just for him to do that. And then on second and goal, that's Jake Temple with the one-yard score. And UCLA is back on top. A gutsy fourth and 15 works out. And now the Bruins are back on top as it is 31-27. to Keith Fleming hobbling on one leg pretty much. Can he lead a comeback? First down, Fleming under pressure, and he is intercepted again. Risky throw by Fleming. Nobody was open. He probably should have thrown it away, but was under pressure. He panicked, and that's Barrett with the INT. Back-to-back -back weeks of two interception games for Keith Fleming. Fleming has now turned the ball over three times today, and UCLA is in the driver's seat. Westlake has to get a stop here. That's Lee with the reception, and the Bruins are getting very close to this end zone. Westlake has to force them to a field goal. Third and three. Hefner does not get it. He loses two. Nick Gardner with probably the biggest defensive play of the game thus far. So UCLA will have to kick the field goal. It will remain a one-possession game whether the kick is good or not. As the field goal will go down the uprights, it is now 34-27. to Can Westlake come back down the field and try to tie this game up? As you can see, number four Oklahoma led by the Heisman favorite Anthony Woodard. Loses to Oklahoma State despite 327 yards and three scores from Woodard. Very interesting there. I suppose that's good news for Westlake if they lose this game. They don't have to worry about Oklahoma passing them. Hit hard there. That's Tegan Moon with the reception. And Westlake is trying to move it down the field, but they are having some troubles as it's now third and eight. Hornets have to get a conversion here. Fleming scrambling to his right. And it looks like he's going to try to run for the first down, and he does, sliding at around the opposing 41. Westlake has all three timeouts. They have plenty of time. I don't think the clock is the issue right now. I think it's just a matter of if Westlake is going to score or not. Hand off to Sparks. He makes a nice cut to the outside. Isaiah Sparks with a gain of 20. Westlake is now in the red zone, and if I'm the Hornets, I try to take time 
off this clock because there's still about a minute and a half to go. John Cummings now with the handoff. Bullying past defenders. He gets it inside the five. And as I mentioned earlier, Westlake is chewing clock down to 50 seconds now. First and goal. It's the freshman, Matt Miller, with the rushing touchdown. And Westlake ties it up. Miller with his first career rushing score. He does have a receiving touchdown in his career, though. And the Hornets will tie it up at 34 apiece with just 40 seconds to go. Can UCLA, all UCLA needs is a field goal. Can they drive down the field and get some last second points? On first down, it's nearly intercepted. Mac Terry had it right in his hands. That could have been the game. But UCLA gets lucky and they've got another shot. Second and 10, a screen for Tanner and he loses five. Dylan Washington brings him down and the clock would be stopped with a West Lake timeout. The Hornets believe they can get a stop and try to drive down the field. Tanner loses four more. Nick Gardner brings him down. UCLA is now down to the two. I guess on the bright side, the Bruins do have one of the better punters in college football at Stafford Fortin as Justin Graves lets the ball dribble to around the 15-yard line. I don't know why Graves ran away from the ball. I can promise you that was the controller who moved him, not me. So if Graves called a fair catch, there would be probably 25 seconds left, but now there's 14. Westlake needs one big play. They need to call a timeout, and they need to kick a field goal. That should be the game plan. As Keith Fleming with a nice run, he will be hit out of bounds with just seven seconds to go. Now Westlake is probably a first down away from being in field goal range. First and 15 after a delay of game, as Keith Fleming going to look to throw it. Fleming scrambling now. He tries to get it to Tegan Moon, but it's nearly intercepted. So now the Hornets are going to need a Hail Mary or some sort of touchdown here. Otherwise, this game is going to go to overtime. Final play of regulation. Fleming scrambling with it. Fleming going to go deep. It looked like he was trying to get it to Dale McBride. However, it was way underthrown. That was actually closer to John Cummings. And that will do it for regulation. This game is tied at 34. We are headed to overtime. Westlake will pick Tails again because usually Tails never fails, but it fails again. And UCLA will start on defense, so the Hornets will have it here on offense as they try to score first. Third and two, the Hornets so far have been running the football on this drive as they run for the first down. A gain of five for Matt Miller, and the Hornets are getting very close to this end zone. In college football, overtime does not have a game clock, so keep that in mind as Isaiah Sparks loses five. He ran into his blocker, he tumbled backwards, and the rest was history there. Second and 15 now for Wesley. Keith Fleming gonna look to throw it. Fleming scrambling, his pass is underthrown and it's picked. Robinson with the INT, that one might do it. A costly turnover for Keith Fleming. He underthrew Reggie Herman, and now UCLA just needs a field goal. Three interceptions today for Keith Fleming. As I mentioned in the last episode, Fleming has no luck when it comes to interceptions being dropped. But still, five interceptions the past two games. As John Hefner nearly fumbles the ball there, that wouldn't have been good for UCLA. Still a gain of 18. All the Bruins need is points, and the game will be over. Second and goal. Hefner under pressure, and he is sacked for a loss of yardage. That one was Justin Graves who brought him down. Now it's third and goal. The Hornets pretty much have to force a turnover on this play. Otherwise, UCLA can kick a field goal and end it. Or the Bruins can score a touchdown, and it looks like that's what's going to happen. Anthony Tanner on the screen pass will walk it off. And for the third straight season, Westlake has lost to UCLA, this time in overtime. A very emotional game here. It did not result in a victory. And UCLA just has Westlake's number. The Hornets are never able to beat these guys, and it seems like that continues today. This was a very gutsy performance by Keith Fleming. He got injured, I think, on like three separate occasions, but he continued to tough it out, and although Keith Fleming did not play well after he got injured, I'm not going to act like he played a good game today because he didn't. Four turnovers, the fumble, and three interceptions. Westlake has to do a better job of ball security, and that starts with quarterback Keith Fleming, who has now caused, like, at least 10 or 11 turnovers 
thus far this year. So as long as Westlake can clean up the mistakes on offense, I think they'll be fine. Next week, the Hornets play the 1-6 Boise State Broncos. I guess that's a good opportunity to get back on track. Hope everybody enjoyed the episode. I know it's not the result we wanted, especially against a team that we don't really like very much. But now that we have adversity, I guess we have to make the most of it.